I think the thing that we can learn from apes is their ability to work with nature and to survive within nature without destroying nature. And I think there's a lot of indigenous communities around the world that still live, like there's some, still some Indian tribes living in the Amazon that still live off the land. The Aboriginal, Australian Aboriginals, there's so many different groups that have been able to do that. But for some reason, this more contemporary society doesn't understand that and doesn't know how, how to function on that level. But I've spent a lot of time in Borneo and that's made a big impact on my work and, and myself. This one particular place I've been visiting, over a period of 12 years I've watched the, it be deforested basically and that's uh, the, how quickly that can happen and the impact that that can have is, is quite catastrophic. When people start talking about what makes us different to our closest animal relatives, being the apes, language is our thing that we're so different with. But it's, you know, it's, I find it ludicrous because they have their own language and they have a language that they can use to communicate with us as well. Touching that non-verbal language is a very similar. I mean, it's like when you speak to someone and they might, have, they might say something but you don't believe what they're saying because you're subconsciously reading their body language and their body language is saying something completely different. I started doing the really classic facial expressions that chimpanzees use. If they are trying to attract a partner, they pout and they, they, do, they do a particular facial movement. So there was that one and aggression, happiness, all those sort of things. But since then they've evolved to more sort of antagonistic or things that are a bit more um, probably coming from me. <laughs> They're more sort of um, expressions of my own personality or even people around me. We are physiologically so similar that the movements and the expressions and things just follow, you know, just even by the muscles. And, but the, the touching of the fingers is is a thing that I've always really focused on that really reminds me of something human or something animal, whichever way you look at it. Their hands, are, they're stiffer and more gnarled and, but they, they have this sensitivity to them and they use them. I spent quite a lot of time traveling in the Soviet Union and Poland and different Eastern Bloc countries in the 80s and they had those very huge monolithic sculptures, some of them 20 metres high, um, with fists raised in the air and monumentalising things, which gives this power to that, to that figure or that object. By making, making the, the bust huge and making the fingers huge, they, they overwhelm the human. The series of busts that I've made, which I've been making over a period of 10 years, which are taken originally from a death mask of a chimpanzee that I worked with at Antwerp Zoo. From that death mask, I've been able to recreate different facial expressions. So it's almost like giving life back to that chimpanzee. And I wanted that chimp to go into a, a bust-like format so that it would give it the dignity that often sculptures for, you know, kings and queens and scholars get. When I was in Beijing recently I was really interested in, in the symbol of the Monkey King and um, the Monkey King goes right back through history and is very important in China still today I, I, and it's, it's symbolic of East meets West as well and I think what's going on in China and with the West at the moment the, the Monkey King becomes this very contemporary important figure again. So Chinese people would look at my work and think about the zodiac and think about all the things that the monkey means in their, in their own sort of culture, which is different than ours. When I'm starting a new body of work, I work out the conceptual nature of what, what I'm wanting to do. And then I start thinking about the mediums, what the best medium to present that would be. The beauty of um, making the works, particularly the fingers and the hands and the, and the large foot in bronze, is the ability of people to touch them. 
the more they're touched, they get patinated and the bronze shows through. But it's also that physical interaction it's, is, is the moment when those works really come into their own. You know, where a finger touches the large finger or where a hand touches the hand. And it's that human against ape, similarity difference thing that happens. That's when the works are at their best. <laughs>